Okay, so today, uh, finally, concurrency. And uh, we're going to spend maybe two or three lectures on concurrency. And then we're going to go over two major topics. First one is um, something called Grand Central Dispatch. Okay, And uh, these two are different concurrency models. And right now, they are coexist in the uh, Swift ecosystem. Okay, So you can choose which one to use. Uh, like w w whatever, uh, like w uh, suit your like purpose best. Okay, and uh, first is something called Grand Central Dispatch, and the second one is called Swift Concurrency. Okay, this kind of official name by Apple. It's called Swift Concurrency. Uh, well, essentially just some async await syntax come with Swift, and uh, since all these things right come with the language feature in integrated as some kind of language feature. So well, Swift called that as Swift concurrency. Okay? So today, we're going to focus on the Grand Central Dispatch. And uh, maybe last, next time, we're going to go over the Swift concurrency. Okay? So Grand Central Dispatch. Again, there's some definition from Apple's official documentation. And uh, well, you can just read all these things. Like, quite boring. <laughs> But I also uh, have the URL here. Uh, you can go online to check the documentation about the Grand Central Dispatch, OK? And uh, we're going to refer to that as GCD sometimes, OK? Just an acronym. Now, why we want to use the Grand Central Dispatch? If you guys are already familiar with like Python, C++, OK, you know uh, or you can always have the freedom to create your own thread, create your own process, okay, freely, okay, and manage these threads, like, in whatever, you, in whatever way you want, okay? So why we want something fancier, like Grand Central Dispatch, okay? So the reason is, first, um, the Grand Central Dispatch as a kind of manager, okay, to control all the threads, managing all the tasks, okay? It can manage threads for you, and in which case it may improve performance by reusing free threads instead of just creating threads, destroy threads, creating threads like repeatedly. Okay, so how many of you are familiar with the thread pool, the concept of thread pool? Would you like like give some <laughs> brief introduction about what, what kind of thing thread pool is? Uh -huh. uh, that the process has, and then maybe we're only using product, like uh, depending on downloads and UI and some other things. So eight are available, they're still existing, but unused. But then if you create a new task on another queue, mm -hmm. um, Grand Central Dispatch can just use one of those threads that has been created on the thread. Yes, exactly. So thread pool is, as Nick suggests, is a pool of threads. Okay, so it kind of create a multiple threads for you at the very beginning and keep all these threads alive, okay? The reason why thread pool can actually improve your performance because it avoids the uh, kind of repeated process of creating and destroying threads, which can be really costly, okay? And uh, another reason why we want to use Grand Central Dispatch is it can help you to utilize all the cores in your CPU more efficiently and elegantly, okay? Otherwise you have to sorry. Otherwise you have to manually check and use all the free CPUs and spawn maybe new process or threads. Okay, manually. Okay? Because well, you have like more than in modern technology you have lots of like cores in your CPUs, okay? And you usually you want to utilize this full potential. Okay? And uh, when it comes to using some low-level API, it gets really complicated. So Grand Central Dispatch manages all this complexity for you. So uh, it abstracts all the complexity away. Okay? And the next thing is, it also utilizes all different types of CPUs, of course. Because, okay? well, maybe, you know, like in iPhone or like in modern phone uh, architecture, CPU architecture, they have different types of CPUs. Okay? Some CPUs can be more efficient. Right? Okay? And some CPU have more performance to perform more com complicated tasks. 
Okay? And uh, the Grand Central Dispatch, again, abstract all these things out. So you can just simply use Grand Central Dispatch, and you can actually dispatch these tasks to different type of CPUs according to different contexts. Okay? Now, well, there are actually lots of more other reasons why you want to use Grand Central Dispatch, but we're going to stop right here. And now, when we come to Grand Central Dispatch, there are two major concepts. Okay? So first one is thread. Okay? You guys already seen the kind of illustration of thread last time when we talked about the web API, like why we need threads, like why we need async await in the, like when we initiating the web API request, right? And uh, another concept we gonna uh, learn is something called dispatch queue, okay? So Grand Central Dispatch is kind of a name referring to the entire system, okay? And it comes with threads and dispatch queues, okay? So we, we will get to, we will get to that one by one, okay? So first, threads. So again, let's assume we have some main thread which we already um, went over last time. So every app, uh, at the very beginning of its life cycle, the system creates a some sort of main thread for the app. And all your code uh, actually running in the main thread, okay? Otherwise, uh, like, uh, except you kind of explicit about like, I want to dispatch some, thread, uh, some task to other threads, okay? So we got a main thread, of course, during the lifetime of your app, you may want to create multiple other threads. So for example, you can have a new thread for initiating web request. Okay? And of course, you may have some other threads for like accessing database, writing to the database, all kind of thing. Lots of other threads you may want to create okay, throughout the lifetime of your app. Now, let's take a look at the uh, concept of dispatch queue. Okay, so dispatch queue, as the name suggested, it's a queue, okay? And uh, this is a queue where you actually gonna submit different tasks, okay? And task in this context actually is some sort of function or closure in Swift. So you submit a sort of function into the, this dispatch queue, okay? Is that clear so far? So you can see right now we have like three tasks here. So task number one, task number two, and task number three. Okay. So for example, maybe we can have task number one as just some, uh, well, print statement here. Okay. So this is our task, and we can submit okay the task to this dispatch queue. Okay, so for example, we can do things one by one to submit all the three tasks into one dispatch queue. Okay, this is just one, uh, one dispatch queue. Okay. Now, later, so we submit all these tasks into dispatch queue, but I mean, it's just a queue. Okay. Your code still has to be executed, like sometime, right? Um, these tasks in the dispatch queue will be popped out, okay? And actually get executed in some thread later. And uh, this behavior, when you how to like pop out things or adding things into this dispatch queue happens in a FIFO order. So first in, first out, okay? And this is actually quite important in dispatch queue. Every behavior, like, Whenever you're adding or removing things from this pack here, you always have it in FIFO order. There's no exception, okay? Now, let's take a look at how we actually use the dispatch queue to like uh, utilize the dispatch queue and how the dispatch queue actually internally managing all the threads for you, okay? So for example, we already have submitted like three tasks before like into this dispatch queue. Okay, and uh, now this pay queue gonna actually trying to execute all these tasks. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do is gonna pick up some threads if there are some threads available in the system. Otherwise, you're gonna create a new threads. Okay, for you. Okay, so you don't need to create the uh, threads explicitly. Okay, all this thing done implicitly behind the thing. 
Okay? So first, in this case, you're going to pop out the first one, the task number one. Okay? And to put that into some threads, and this thread is going to execute, execute all these functions, okay? which is, in this case, it's just task number one. Okay? And of course, when, it comes to, when the task one actually get done, the dispatch queue is going to pop out the second task. Okay? And second task gonna be put onto well some other threads. Well, it can be the same threads, it can be some other threads. Okay, depends on this dispatch queue to manage the behavior for you. Okay? So you don't have the uh, you don't have that transparency. Okay. Of course, well, you can also uh, the dispatch queue gonna also uh, trying to execute the task three. Uh, okay. Is that clear so far? So how the internally the dispatch queue how like how the dispatch queue manage internally the uh, the threads to get your job done right? is that clear so far okay now um, so let's talk about like two different types of dispatch queues okay so. When we comes to dispatch queues, we have two different types. First one is serial queue, and the second one is called concurrent queue. Okay. Now first, that's actually uh, yeah, that's uh, that's an important important note I mentioned before. So all the things inside dispatch queue happens like dispatch queue always dispatch tasks strictly in the FIFO order. Okay, you're gonna see that later. Okay, when it comes to priority, how to prioritize different tasks. Okay. Now first, let's take a look at the serial queue. So you actually already see that example well, in the previous slides. So uh, in the previous slides of like showing you how the interaction between the dispatch queue and uh, threads is kind of sort of behavior of serial queue. Okay. So right now, assume we have something called serial dispatch queue, and it's just one queue. One dispatch queue, okay? And it has four tasks and maybe more in that dispatch queue. Okay? And this serial dispatch queue gonna serialize all the process and pop out one task at one time. Okay? For example, right now you're gonna just pop out the first task and put that into maybe a thread one. Okay, for example, like assume we have right now in the system, we have three threads available for us to execute uh, tasks, okay? Now, when the uh, thread of one, when the tasks on the thread of one finish, okay, you're gonna pop out the second task, okay, and put into one of the threads, okay. Maybe in this case, maybe you're gonna put this task to thread of one to ask you this task, okay. Now, after this down, well, maybe sometimes you decide to go with different threads. It happens, okay? So you cannot assume this, all these tasks, task, tasks uh, in the dispatch queue are going to happen in the thin thread, okay? It's not guaranteed, okay? It can happen in different threads, okay? Now, um, when the task three get done, well, you can pop out the, f the last one and put maybe one of these threads. Okay, is that clear? All right, so just um, review and summary. So serial queue can only dispatch and perform um, task, one task at one time, okay? Until that task actually returns. Well, in this case, I mean, actually the function or closure returns, okay? Now it can when that, when that task returns, when that task, task finished, you can move on to the next one, okay? So only one task at one time, okay? Is that clear how the serial queue perform? Yeah? Okay. Now, let's take a look at the uh, concurrent queue. So concurrent queue, as the name suggested, Right now, you're trying to do things concurrently, okay? For example, again, we have like three threads available in our system right now. And then Grand Dispatch Queue actually, sorry, Grand Central Dispatch 
the, this kind of system, okay, already know you have three threads available, okay? Now, you can actually just pop three tasks out, okay? And assign all these three ta tasks to three threads, okay, at one time. But of course, you have to keep in mind, all these things happens in the FIFO order, okay? So first, the, the task one gets out first, and then task two, and then task three, okay? So now, you have three threads are uh, executing three tasks concurrently, okay? This is how concurrent Q behaves. Again, some summary. So, sorry, it should be concurrent dispatch Q. Uh, so, it's a typo. Concurrent dispatch Q can dispatch and perform multiple tasks at a time, okay? Now, let's take a look at how we actually, well, use the code. So right now, by far, you already know the concepts of like the interaction between dispatch queue and threads. So how are we supposed to create our own dispatch queue? Okay, and to submit the tasks to the dispatch queue. So first, we're gonna, the first thing we're gonna say is something called dispatch queue, which is a class, okay? And it has initializer, uh, which requires one argument. It's just a label. It's some sort of name for that spec queue, okay? And uh, well, by default, when you just apply a label argument to the initializer, gonna by, by default, it's gonna be a serial queue, okay? Just like the example above. And uh, you can also be explicit to say, this one should be a concurrent view, sorry, concurrent queue, okay? And you have to, use another argument, says attributes, okay? And pass a concurrent into that one. So now you get a concurrent queue, okay? Is that syntax clear? All right. Now, let's focus on this serial queue and see how we actually can submit different tasks to that queue, okay? Now, we have, you can see right now, uh, there are two different options. First one called sync, the queue, like serial queue dot sync, okay? And next one called serial queue dot async, okay? We will get to this difference uh, in the next slide. But like, in s like from the syntax level, is that clear for you guys how to submit the tasks? So you can see like serial queue dot sync, and in the, the, argument you pass into the sync function is actually a closure, okay? It's some sort of task you want the dispatch queue to execute, okay? Now, let's take a look at the difference between the sync and the async, okay? So, let's give you, let me give you guys some well, definition. So, the dot sync function will block the current thread. Okay, and uh, keep executing the following codes only when the submit task is finished. Otherwise, the current thread just gonna be remain blocked. Okay, is that clear? How like what, what what I mean by blocking the thread? Is that clear the concept? Okay, now let's talk about the async. So async will not block the current thread. Okay, instead, it's just gonna submit a task and immediately returns, okay? So the task's gonna still be executed sometime in the future, okay, because it's already in the dispatch queue, and it will be sometime, like, at some point in the future, it's gonna be popped out from the dispatch queue and put, some, put the task into some thread and to be executed, okay? The major difference between these two is one gonna return immediately and one gonna wait until the task is finished. Okay, is that clear? The difference between these two? Yeah, actually take a look at the, uh, an example here. Let me see. So I have a playground file here. I'm gonna, yeah, I will push this file to, the, to our course repository after this class, okay? 
So first, let's take a look at this thing. So I define a function called run serial queue. Okay, and inside the run serial queue function, wait, is that visible to you guys? Give me a second. Ah, is that better? All right. So uh, inside this run serial queue, again, I define another function called run sync call. Okay, and let's take a look at the impl implementation of run sync call. Okay, so it takes a dispatch queue. Okay, and it just simply loop through, loop through from zero to four, like five times. Okay, and uh, you're gonna actually submit five different tasks. Okay, and uh, when before you actually submit the task, task, you're gonna print something. Let's say write to submit sync task. Okay, and after the after the submission, you're gonna say submit submitted sync task with the number, okay? And inside this task, so first we're gonna say, okay, we got started. Then we're gonna sleep like two seconds. This is a function called say sleep, okay? You essentially sleep the threads for like two seconds, okay? Now, after the, all these things finished, you're gonna say finish sync task with the number, okay? Is that clear so far? All right? Okay, now let's go back to this run serial queue, okay? So first, first thing is I, of, of course, I'm gonna create a serial queue, okay? In this syntax, I'm gonna run this, run, submit five tasks, okay? In a synced way, where we call the dot sync, okay? On that serial queue. And uh, let me take, let's take a look at what kind of behavior it has, okay? So let's run the main function. Inside that, we run the run serial queue function. Okay. Well, you can see different, like all these five tasks submit, uh, like get submitted, like sequentially, right? So, well, so is that clear why this, why the ordering happens in this case? All right, good. So you can see that first you're gonna say ready to submit, okay? And you're actually gonna start and finish the task and uh, well, I say already submitted, okay? Now, let's take a look at another function. In this case, we have a function called run async call, okay? This one is actually, well, essentially quite similar to the previous one. But the only difference here is, in this case, we're gonna use dot async, okay? Use dot async to submit the tasks. So again, quick question. So what's the difference between async and sync function call? What's the key difference? Anyone? Yep. Async is not, not blocking. Yeah, async is not blocking. So, what happened when we actually use the async to submit a task? You can just quickly submit all these five tasks. All right. Now let's take a look at the behavior here. So let's comment out this one and run the async call. Okay. Let's run the main function here. Okay. Now, well, you can see at the very beginning, you kind of submit all these uh, like five tasks like immediately, okay? And now all these five tasks got like get finished one by one, okay? So have you guys seen the <coughs> difference between the async and sync? How this things behaves? Right? Or any question on that? Okay. Now, let's move on to the next thing. Give me a second, let's see. Oh, wait a second. Okay, so actually let me show you the sync call one more time. Okay, so since the sync, when you, when you submit the task with the sync is blocking method, okay? 
So you can only, let me actually go above. So, so for example, in the first it, in the first loop, okay, you're gonna submit this task, okay. But the thing is, it's blocking because it's using the sync, right? And uh, when using the sync, all the the current thread is blocked until this task, this task, okay, included in this closure form, is finished, okay. So that's why your for loop is kind of blocked until the first one is actually finished. Then you can kick start, like, uh, you can start the second one, okay? Now, let's take a look at what kind of behavior the Grand Central, dis well, the dispatch queue gonna have when you actually block a thread, okay? So for example, right now you have, let's assume we have a concurrent dispatch queue, okay? And we have several different, um, tasks right here, okay? And uh, all the, like the first three tasks are submit with the sync call, okay? By doing that, for example, right now, we're gonna pop out the first task, okay? Actually, first two tasks, and put them to the current like two available threads, okay? We're trying to execute these two tasks on two different threads. However, the thing is, they are sync function call, okay? So all these threads gonna be blocked. Let's assume both the task one and task two, uh, task two gonna take quite a long time to finish, okay? So right now, both threads are blocked. The thing is, let's assume right now in a system, we only have two threads available, okay? Now what if we want to still con uh, like continue to execute the the third task, okay? So the Grand Central Dispatch is gonna, again, manage the thread for you. So you're gonna actually create a new thread, okay? You're gonna create a thread for you. So you don't have to manually to create threads again, okay? Now you're gonna put that sync function into the thread three, okay? Is that clear how the internally the dispatch, Grand Central Dispatch manage the uh, threads for you, right? Okay, there actually, uh, there is a tiny problem or tiny caveat I think I need to mention here. So when you use a lot of sync function here and you actually block lots of threads, actually you're gonna encounter one major problem. It's called thread exploding. Are you guys familiar with that concept? Just a fa fancy name. So essentially, you're blocking two main threads. So what do, what kind of behavior the grand central dispatch is gonna do, okay? It's gonna create, the, the, create a new thread for you, okay? But if you're blocking too many threads, you're gonna create lots of threads. So right now, in the thread pool, you have too many threads to manage, and also, you're gonna do context switch a lot. And the context switch, uh, how, many, how many of you haven't uh, took the ESS 150? So are you familiar with the context switch, the concept? Okay, so essentially, when we, so for example, assume we have different process, okay? And we, ha we can have different threads in one process. And uh, right now, maybe we want to switch from one process to another process, and the system gonna save some, uh, save some context, okay? And later, when, when the, CPU switch back to that process or that thread, you're gonna re kind of retrieve that data back, okay? And restore that state. State. In that sense, you're gonna actually have some overhead, okay? You have some extra thing to do when you switch between different process and different threads, which is called context switch, okay? And I mentioned before, and uh, just as I mentioned, the context switch has a overhead. So when you're creating lots of threads, the context, the context switch, the cost of context switch can be really a huge deal, okay? And uh, at that time, you may notice, even you have lots of different threads, you have m like, like thousands of threads in your system, but the efficiency actually drops, okay? 
the performance actually drops because now your CPU actually put lots of time to do the context switch instead of actually doing some useful things. Okay? And this is called threading explosion. Okay? So thread pool actually explode. Right? Just for some fancy name. Okay, now let's take a look at how we actually can prioritize different tasks. Because in the real world scenario, you may want to, well, you may have different tasks, right? And different tasks with different priority. You may want to prioritize different, some tasks maybe you may prioritize some UI updates, okay? Because you want to your app to be responsive, okay? So how we do that? Now let's introduce something called quality of service. And quality of service is, well, it's a struct defined in the core foundation standard lab. Sorry, it's not, maybe it's not core foundation. But it's defined in standard library, okay? It just have some static let variable, okay? And uh, it represents different, well, priority. So let's take a look at this thing, okay? So the quality service, the quality of service, usually we call as QoS, okay? Uh, it kind of represents the execution priority in the, in the dispatch queue, okay? And then it applies to tasks. And I already um, copy paste this uh, URL here. You can go to the official documentation to see full document, okay? But usually we have, so for the quality of service, usually we have this maybe five predefined um, quality of service in the same library. First one is called user interactive. And then next is user initiate, then it's default one. When you just say does async or does sync, usually go with default one, okay? And also you have something called utility, which is kind of low priority, and the, and the background is gonna be the, uh, again, the lower priority one, okay? So from top to bottom, the priority decrease. Okay, is that clear? So now how we actually can use this, something called this QoS, okay, to mark our tasks with different priority. Let's take a look at the code. Again, let's assume we have some serial queue, okay? The syntax looks like, like that. Now, usually we want to, well, as you've seen before, we can submit task with dot async, right? And uh, in that function call, just say, well, print something, right? Now, I can also put a argument into this async call, okay? And uh, the argument, the labeling, the external name is called the QoS, okay? And you can say dot .background or dot .user interactive or dot .user initiate, or maybe just dot .default, dot .background, dot .utility, okay? To specify the priority of the task you're gonna submit. Okay, is that clear how we use this thing? All right, now, again, let's take a look at an uh, example here. So, here we go. So, here we have a function called submit QS tasks, okay? And just as I showed before in the slides, okay, we have different function call in this case, okay? And, uh, you know, well, first one is kind of the default priority because we just use the default arguments, okay? And second one is gonna be a background. It's kind of lower priority than the default one, okay? And the third task we're gonna submit is is ha has a user interactive quality of service. And this one is actually have a, uh, has a higher priority than the previous two, okay? It's higher priority than default and higher priority than the background, okay? So now let's take a look at the behavior. So we call the submit QS task here, okay? Maybe actually when, before we running this code, any guess like how this gonna behave? What kind of? Yeah. I guess it's well, so you can run first, you can calculate your async and then background. 
You're gonna, uh, um, so which, which, one, which one runs first? Uh, user interactive. User interactive? Okay. Good guess, but let's take a look at this thing, okay? So let's run the main thread. Well, it takes two seconds to finish the first one. It takes two seconds to finish the second one. Again, it takes two seconds to finish the last one. But you can see, well, even though we see the, f the, the QS, the third task with a kind of higher priority, but still get executed kind of in the, uh, in the original order. Okay, so again, this is big caveat in the Grand Central Dispatch. Okay. Now, so why, let's try to understand why the user interactive with the higher priority actually happens after the default and background priority. Okay, so the QS won't help you to rearrange the tasks that already been submitted to the dispatch queue. Okay, so the QS can only help you to make sure the higher priority test can be executed as soon as possible, but it's just as soon as possible. Okay, so again, still remember the one important thing I mentioned before is all the tasks in a dispatch queue can only be dispatched in the FIFO order. Okay, so there is no rearrangement happening behind the thing. Okay, when you submit the task later than the first one, it will only be executed later than the first one. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at the uh, illustration of different things. So again, well, you can see right now we have two tasks, okay, and uh, the color uh, actually represents different priority, and brighter green stands for a higher priority. In this case, first we're gonna submit the first task, which with a default priority, okay? And it has a little bit brighter green, okay? And second task has a background priority, okay? Now, what if we have a third task just got to submit to the dispatch queue, okay? With a much higher priority, in this case, it's gonna be user initiated, okay? As I mentioned before, uh, well, this is something called priority inversion, okay? Just some terminology, fancy name for this kind of sp specific uh, situation, okay? So when the higher priority happens after some lower priority task, we call this as priority inversion, okay? Now you may, well, we have actually discussed about that, so we may guess the dispatch queue gonna rearrange different tasks because well we have something have we have something with higher priority, okay. But the thing is again, no dispatch queue won't rearrange the tasks in the queue. Okay. Instead, again go back to the previous situation. So we have three tasks. Okay. Now, behind the thing, actually when the dispatch queue detect this prop, uh, the priority inversion, you're gonna bump up all the priority before the task three. In this case, you're gonna bump up the first two, the priority of first two tasks, okay? Right now, the task one and task two actually, actually behind the scene, have a priority with user initiated. Okay, it's kind of equal priority with the third task. Right now, it's just kind of, Still, well, it still happens in the FIFO order, okay? Execute things one by one, okay? Is that clear? Yeah. Well, actually, let me go back to the code. So right now we have a, uh, we have a serial queue, okay? So what if we actually trying to use a concurrent view? Sorry, concurrent queue with attributes and concurrent. So give a guess about the behavior. Any idea how I'm gonna behave this one? So we just switch from the serial queue to concurrent view. Concurrent queue, sorry. So actually you're gonna see the third one gonna ask you first, okay? It's a little bit odd. But you can see, 
So you're gonna say first go with the default one, and now you're gonna start to the user interactive and now the background. Okay, so it's kind of counterintuitive, right? Well, compared to what I've said before. So the thing is, indeed, for a concurrent view, you can pop out different tasks, okay, and schedule them to different threads. Okay, that's the truth. And also, this uh, thing only happens in the FIFO order. This is also the truth. The thing is, the concurrent queue can actually to activate certain threads, okay, earlier than other threads. So when you submit all these tasks, tasks, all these things still again happens in the FIFO order, and you still need to bump up all the uh, uh, the priority of all the other tasks before that third task, okay? But right now, you kind of activate the third threads more earlier than other two threads, okay? Is that clear why this kind of counterintuitive thing happened right here? Okay, now let's go, let's switch back to the serial queue. Here we go. Oops, now. Let's go to the next topic, synchronization, okay? So we're just gonna briefly discuss the synchronization. And in this case, and I'll show you guys a scenario where we can utilize the dispatch queue to achieve a lock-free synchronization, okay? So take a look at this class, something silly name called a shared data, and it has a local variable called shared data, a shared, which is an integer in this case. And for example, we have defined two functions. One is called set va shared value, and the second one is just simply reading the value. Okay, is that clear? Now, so what's the problem of this class when it comes to the multi-threading or concurrency world? Any idea? Come on. Yeah, data risk, which one? Well, yes, it only has one field, so yeah, potential data risk. Because when you initiate multiple threads to access that field called shield, a sh shield, so it can happen, maybe sometimes you set the shared value, okay? But when, when you actually assign this value to this local variable, maybe other threads are gonna say, I'm gonna read the value. But right now, the value you just read in is not really the value, just get updated. Because, well, the update haven't been done, right? Okay. So this is potential data risk. Okay. So any solution on that? What kind of solution you can think about? What, a, what kind of techniques you're gonna use? What kind of tool? Come on. Yeah, Latif. Exactly. So, like, so, okay, so first get rid of the spec queue. So, without the spec queue, have you, come on, locking mechanism, right? You can think about, like, how to use the lock, right? Actually, there is a lock. Actually, there are lots of locks. So, uh, going back to the old world, when we use Objective C, we can directly access the C lock, okay? So, which is a lock defined in the C language, okay? It's called p thread mutex lock. I forgot the exact name, but you can access that lock. But that lock is primitive, okay? So in modern days, the core foundation provides another type of lock, okay? And it's called, well, it's just called lock, I believe. It's defined in the foundation library. It's okay, just called lock. You can search online and to take a look at the documentation of that one. Of course, you can use lock, okay? But using log have some problem. So for example, well, you can sometimes forget to release the log, okay? And you're gonna, you're gonna well, resolve, you, you, can, you can have kind of like that log situation, okay? Now, as well, Latif mentioned, we can try to utilize the serial queue with the sync function to achieve a log-free synchronization in this case, OK? 
Okay. So let's take a look at the new uh, code. So what changed? So we have a queue. Okay. In this case, it's a serial queue. Okay. And when we actually set the value or read the value, we put these tasks into that serial queue with a sync function. Okay. Is that clear? The syntax or, okay. So does that make sense? Like why this one can prevent the data arrays? Okay, and uh, actually in this case, we are not using lock. So you won't actually forget to release the lock. The, the deadlock, well, the deadlock still gonna, still can happen in this case. I mean, not this case. Well, when it comes to a more complex, com com complex scenario, it can still happen. But for this simple use case, right now, you kind of avoid the deadlock, okay? You avoid releasing the lock manually. Okay, is that clear? Okay. Now, let's talk about some special dispatch queues, okay? Dispatch, Grand Central Dispatch as a manage, manage, threading manage system, okay? Manage lots of queues for you, okay? Manage lots of dispatch queues for you. So we have introduced customized queues, okay? So, so far, we have been creating lots of different customized queues, okay? Like concurrent queue, serial queue, okay? T like to customize the concurrency behavior, okay? However, there are actually some special dispatch queues already created by the Grand Central Dispatch at the very beginning of your, your uh, apps or even the Intel system, okay? There are two major special dispatch queues. First one is called main queue, okay? Main queue is a serial queue, okay? And all tasks on the main queue will be executed on the main thread, okay? You will not use other threads, okay? You will only use the main thread. In this case, you may want to sometimes use the main queue to do some UI-related work, okay? Just as how we use with the main actor before. But we'll get to the main actor uh, maybe next, next lecture. And the next one is called global queue, okay? Global queue is a concurrent queue. And this queue is shared, shared by the Intel system by all different apps in your system, okay? Let's take a look at some simple usage of these two special queues. So the main queue, you can access that by direct, directly say dispatch queue dot main, okay? Again, this is a queue defined for you. You can say dot sync or dot async to submit task to that queue, okay? And all these tasks gonna be executed in the main thread. And uh, for the global queue, you have actually lots of, um, lots of function here. There's one example. You can just say dispatch queue, okay? And the, by, this, by using this, you are referring to the global queue, okay? You can see something like concurrent perform, essentially concurrently perform multiple different tasks, okay? Multiple iterations, okay? The signature looks something like that. You can go online and check this out, okay? Well, and uh, of course, we have lots of other functions and concepts in the Grand Central Dispatch. It's really complicated and powerful tool for you to manage all these concurrency things, okay? So if you are interested, you can take a look at the uh, function like async apt, which allows you to asynchronously um, execute some task after a certain period of time, okay? And you can also use schedule, which comes with the combined framework, okay? And uh, that's more. And also you may want to uh, take a look at this something called dispatch work item and dispatch group. Okay, just some advanced concepts here. And uh, that's all for today. All right, thank you guys.